Hello friends, this video on communication systems part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So the next new term which we are going to talk about is noise. What is noise? Noise is a very common term. We all know what it means literally. Right? What is noise? When there is no teacher in your class, what happens? The children in the class start shouting. So what does that create? That creates noise. Right? So when there is no discipline, people move here and there, they talk to each other, they make sound. So we see that, oh, there is a lot of noise here. If you go out and there is a bad traffic jam on the road, what happens? The vehicles start honking on each other. So those sounds actually disturb you and you say there is so much of noise here on the road. So what is noise? Do you notice one thing in all these examples we always say that noise disturbs us. So noise is something which is unwanted. We do not want it. So noise are unwanted signals that interfere with the transmission and processing of message signals in a communication system. So even noise are signals, so, but these are unwanted signals. We do not want these signals to be present. Why do we, why we do not want them? Because they actually act as an interference with the transmission of message signals. Now, while the message signals are getting transmitted from the transmitter towards the receiver, it is passing through the channel. So in that channel, if there is a lot of noise, what happens? The signals are unable to get transmitted to the receiver. And that is why we say that these are unwanted signals. Let us suppose that these two people are talking something very important and something very serious. Now suddenly from somewhere on the road, a lot of noise comes in. Maybe suddenly there is a chaos on the road, people are shouting, there is a loud music, people are shouting, dancing and they are doing some sort of silly things. And there is a lot of noise. So what do you think? What do, how will that noise impact these two people? Will they like it? Will they want that, okay, the noise should increase? No, they would not like it. That's because they are talking something very important. Right? So what are they doing? They are actually communicating with each other. So let us suppose if this person is talking and if this person is listening, so he is the source and he is the destination. So the information is actually getting communicated from one person to another. And in between comes this noise. So this noise acts as an interference and they do not like it. So that is a noise. And that is why you saw that when we, uh, I showed you the block diagram of a basic communication system, I showed you that noise comes into the channel and I told that, okay, we'll discuss about noise later. So that is why I told, like when the information or the message signal passes or crosses the channel, meanwhile, there is some sort of noise which also comes into the channel and which tries to interrupt with the transmission of the signals. Okay, so with that basic idea on noise, let us talk about attenuation. What is attenuation? Loss of signal strength while propagating through a medium. You remember some time back I talked about a race. What would happen if there is a race where you have to run for 10 kilometers non-stop? We say that somebody who is strong and stout enough, who is energetic enough, will be able to do it. Whereas somebody who is very weak will not be able to do it. So why do we think that the weak person will not be able to do it? Why? What might happen during the race or during the journey? So similarly here also we say that the strength of the signal should be good enough so that it can propagate through the medium well. Why? Because while the signal passes through the medium or the channel there is some loss in the strength of the signal. Now, why this loss occurs? There can be many reasons for it. Because it might face, because noise can, one of the most, can be one of the most important reasons. That because of the interference due to noise, the strength of the signal becomes weak. Right? Now, let us suppose we have a participant who participated in the race. 
Now let us suppose he is running the 10 kilometer race and suddenly in between something happens. Somebody comes and somebody tries to stop him that no, you cannot run, you don't run. So what is happening actually? The strength of that person is actually reducing, right? Because the coming of that person is an interference. It is a disturbance to the racer. So he is losing time. So he is also getting distracted. So what happens? There is a loss of strength of that person. So similarly, there is a loss of signal strength when it propagates through a medium. And that process is known as attenuation. And we say that the signal is attenuated. Now the question is, what determines the strength of a signal? How do we know that a signal is strong or a signal is weak? Well, the strength of a signal is determined by the amplitude of the signal. You would have often observed this, that while you are talking over the phone to a friend, sometimes there is some kind of disturbance in the line. You are not able to hear the person very clearly. You feel as if the voice of the other person is breaking at intervals. So why does that happen? Because the signal strength is not good enough to be transmitted. Right? So that is an example of attenuation. Now, attenuation happens when the amplitude of the signal starts decreasing. Now, I am sure you all know what is, what is amplitude because we have discussed all these things in our previous classes. So if I have a signal like this, so what is the amplitude? This is the amplitude of the signal. Now, what might happen is when this signal passes through a medium, the amplitude might start decreasing like this due to the different types of interferences in the medium. So that is known as attenuation. So when I talked about attenuation, I told that the amplitude of the signal decreases as it passes through the channel. Now, if that process keeps continuing, a time might come when the amplitude, here you see this was the amplitude before, it gradually starts decreasing, decreasing, decreasing and finally it becomes zero. So what will happen in that case is that by the time if, if you want a signal to travel a very large distance and then reach the receiver, then by the time it actually reaches the receiver, the amplitude will drop down to zero. So there will be no signal left at all. So that is a major problem. So if there is attenuation which is happening at one end, what we can do from our end is to amplify the signal. That means attenuation is happening due to natural processes. It is happening due to the natural interferences which come along the way when the signal travels through the channel. So what we can do is we can try to increase the amplitude of the signal. Now how do we do that? Using an electronic circuit. So we can make a circuit which will actually help in increasing the amplitude of the signal. So that means whatever decrease comes due to attenuation, a sum of it will get compensated due to amplification. So as a result, the strength of the signal will be retained and it will reach the receiver. So where do where is this amplification done? Where exactly? in the communication system. So it is done anywhere between the source and the destination wherever the signal strength becomes weaker than the required strength. So let us suppose that this is the receiver. I'm sorry if this is the transmitter and this is the receiver and they are both connected by a channel. So they are both connected by a channel right now channel is the place where the interferences come in like noise and because of such interference attenuation happens here so where do you think amplification should take place so amplification should also take place somewhere between the source and destination wherever the signal strength becomes weaker let us suppose if this was the signal which actually started traveling suppose at some point of time the amplitude of the signal started decreasing so at that point you amplify the signal so that the amplitude again increases so now again you get back the same signal now it can get transmitted 
Now, you already know the function, how uh, the circuit of an amplifier works, right? Amp we studied about amplifier in our previous lesson in uh, semiconductors, right? So, we all know how exactly an amplifier works. What is amplifier? It is a device that increases the amplitude of a signal. So, if this is your signal, if this is your in input signal, if you pass it through an amplifier, so it will amplify it somewhat like this. And that is the purpose of amplifier. So now you understand the importance of amplification in a communication system. It is basically to compensate for the attenuation. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.